The agenda for tonight is something like this. We have a few high, highlights that we want to share with you. We do have fishing stories, which are generally uh, up your segment of this meeting. And then that's going to be followed by highlights of the bluegills and brews uh, fishing clinic that we have and the highlights of yesterday's oyster roast, which I see some of you here that were there yesterday. And then, of course, we'll have Dave, Dave DeVore wrap up. So fishing stories. Does anyone have a fishing story that they would like to share with us? Come on, don't be bashful. You know I always have somebody hiding in the woods to share with you. Mike, I need you. Can you, uh, I know I didn't put it up. I didn't put it on the screen because I'm doing this presentation. I can't work my computer and do this at the same time. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, today's my dog birthday and she loves to fish with me. So I said, I'm going to go catch fish with you. So she went fishing. And uh, so I threw about a weedless wacky worm over by where I live on the Del Marina. About a five and a half pound bass on the 10 pound test. Snapped me off the first time. So I had to go re rig it. Went back after it. I'm not sure it's a safe fish, but it was a very, a very large fish, five and a half pound, uh, about 26 inch bass. They're biting. They're biting today. Thank you. Congratulations. Now that's that's a fish. Okay, we have a couple other fish that were caught. Two of them, in fact, were caught by uh, John Duran, who's not here today. It was a there's a black drum, and there's a trout. Now you can notice also that he's tagged these trout. If you're interested, there is a program going on about the fish that you catch tagging them, and uh, that will help DNR. Ass assess what's going on uh, in the fishing world and the determination of limitations on fish or not. Uh, plus, I'd like to bring to your attention the fact that on January 21st, there's going to be a saltwater lagoon clinic, and it's going to be spearheaded by none other than uh, um, what's his name, Robert Hale. And Robert Hale is currently the uh, president of CCA Georgia. And so, uh, and he's been a resident here for many years, no longer lives at the landing, but is probably the best fisherman that I know. And then there's the Bluegills and Brews group that goes out fishing. Here's a young lady, I think her name is Kathy, and, and Doug Painter, who is the uh, instructor for, the, for, the, for uh, fly fishing clinics that we hold. And here he is, this young lady has never cast it before. And she's learning how to cast the fly rod pretty efficiently. Then on the right, there's a friend of ours called Steve Bruski who caught his fish. And he's proud of whatever he catches, and God bless him. <laughs> All right, well, if you're fishing at the landings, you still need to have a fishing license. And I think you all know that. And I'm not going to read all these details. You can just go online and, and get yourself a uh, a fishing, fishing license, because here at the landings and the lagoons, it is required. And if you plan on doing salt, salt water fishing, then you need also a salt water information uh, program, or SIP they call it. It's free, but you still need to get one. And then how, how Evans in the back of the room was standing up showing me the lagoon guides that I haven't talked about yet. That's because I hadn't gotten there. Did you hear that? Do you need a hearing aid, Bob? <laughs> uh, anyway, this is something. If you want to know where the fish are and whether or not you're fishing for salt water or fresh water, this is the document you want to get. And it's we appreciate if you get a $10 donation to CCA for the effort that goes through in putting this thing together. But Hal has them in the back of the room. And take a look at them, and I think you'll you'll be impressed. Okay, highlights of the oyster rolls. If you if you were there, you knew what kind of a glorious day it was yesterday. We only had a uh, little few gnats that came out when the wind wasn't blowing properly, but uh, other than that, it was a tremendous event. Good, good turnout. We had over 250 people there. Not many more than 250, but. 250 per se, and the day just went spectacular. I thought the oysters were were super. They came from Virginia, 
they were plump and juicy and sweet. I loved them. And of course, the pig, pig was went went pretty well too. I mean, nothing left over. And here's the other slide. And one of our one of our photographers, well, the photographer that gave me these pictures anyway, has a drone, and you can see the picture on the left is what it looks like. There was plenty of room. I was impressed with how how comfortable I was in uh, with the number of people that were there. Of course, around the oyster table, you need to use your elbows a little bit in initially. But if you're patient and you wait wait a little bit, you really have yourself a good time. Also, now let me just, if you, we record these and you, these meetings. And so if you miss a meeting and you wish to see what, what, what went on, you can go to CCA uh, Skidaway on YouTube and you'll get the entire presentation. Um, you have to look at this ugly face for a while, but meantime, you know, you, you have it. At this time, I'd like to bring Dave Devora. Great, thank you, Vic. Is this on? Can you hear me? Okay, great. So great event we had yesterday, 250 sellout. So all I gotta say, this better be good tonight. You've got a big act to follow, <laughs> and I'm sure it will. So every December for the last 10 years, we featured uh, food, mainly seafood oriented from local chefs in that. And so uh, we've had uh, Hope Meeks from uh, Shellfish, we've had uh, uh, Blaine, Kirk Blaine from Castaway. Uh, we've had a number of presenters, excellent. About five or six years ago, we had this guy named Jesse Blanco present from Eat It and Like It. Did a great job, great job. And so uh, I'd never met Jesse before. We finally met out here in the parking lot and he wanted to scope the church out. There were all kinds of cars in the parking lot. And we came inside the church, no one, no one was here. And this area was all locked. <laughs> And we're knocking on the doors, nobody will let us in, but there's something going on in here. Finally opened the door. We looked in, Jess. You said, I don't support these kind of meetings. <laughs> there were about 50 to 60 people in sheets and white hoods in here. Now, what are you thinking about? Oh, no, not that. It was the fine use sorority from one of the local colleges having their ritual of induction. It was very uncomfortable feeling. Anyhow, it had a happy ending. So I asked Jess if he would present again for us tonight and we'd be sure those people weren't here. <laughs> and we wanted a challenge. We want to see something new. What's happening in Savannah? What's new? What's exciting? What's, what's on the horizons here? So Jess didn't tell me who it was going to be till the last minute. It was a mystery chef, mystery chef. When well, now we, the mystery is solved. So Jess, I'm going to let you introduce him. So introducing Jesse Blanco, eat it and like it. Thank you all for the, uh, for the invite, uh, being here, what, what was that, five, six years ago? I like that one better. Um, thank you again for, uh, for, for having me out here. It's always nice to come and, and, uh, and chat with, with I, I refer to you all, whether you realize it or not, as my people out of the land. You, uh, you, you, are, you have been, since almost day one, huge, huge supporters of what we do with Eat It and Like It. And I know because those of you who sign up for the newsletter actually use your zip code. And so we, we track that stuff. Um, Bluffton is giving you a run for your money, but I, I would say if we went back and audited, we still have a larger following here than we do over there, but it's, it's, it's kind of close. There's just so many people moving to Bluffton, it's like impossible. But anyway. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about food and the food scene. And, and in a minute, Chef is going to come out. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, folklore, what I know about it. I wrote about it, Connect Savannah, last week. And you didn't like it.com. And if you signed up for the newsletter, you saw it. It went to your inbox every Thursday. Louder? Better there? All right. Every Thursday to, uh, to your inbox. Uh, my story last week was uh, one of the brand new restaurants that's about to open here in Savannah. And, uh, and I thought it would be a good fit for them to come and, and join us and, and Chef to come out and uh, tell you a little bit about what they are doing. It's just one of, off the top of my head, three to five really good restaurants that, that have opened or about to open. 
uh, in the area. We'll, we'll get into that after, uh, after Chef comes up and tells you a little bit about what they've got going on beginning on December 20th. So with that said, I'm gonna introduce you to, come on up, Chef. Chef Ryan Whitebuck from Folklore. How's everybody doing? Good. Perfect, perfect. Well, uh, we have a restaurant opening on uh, the corner of MLK and Congress uh, next week. Very excited about it. We're doing some uh, preview dinners for, for some uh, friends of the restaurant this week. It's a couple days from now. Very nervous. Uh, very excited. Um, we've, uh, we've had a lot of success with our other business, uh, Mirabelle, which is over on Abercorn across the street from the cathedral. Um, and the Bellwether House itself, which is on Gaston Street, uh, our, our good neighbor here, uh, been by many times. Um, menus are there. Feel free to grab one. There's more yeah. food coming out. But tell us, how would you describe your what, what your plans are for the, the restaurant on the menu? Well, uh, okay. So what we're doing with the menu is, um, I mean, we're going to be doing American food, Southern food. We're here in, in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. Uh, I, I've done a lot of traveling in East Asia, uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, also Southeast Asia and stuff. And I'm, I'm going to be incorporating some flavors that I've experienced on my journeys over there. Uh, it's not going to be anything unrecognizable, but we are including some like really, really exciting flavors and preparations of stuff over there. Um, we have a great cocktail program. Um, Lonnie, the, she was the bar manager over at Artsley Station, is putting together a really amazing cocktail list for us. We have uh, at, Want some really wonderful resources to uh, from United Distributing and Savannah Distributing as far as wine selections go. Um, but we're just trying to have a really good time and put together something really special for everybody. Tell us what we're having tonight. Um, what you're having tonight, you guys had a little uh, a little rosemary ash cured pimento goat cheese um, and a black sesame cracker. That was the first thing we had out. Uh, we're also doing some mushroom boulevants, which is like a little puff pastry. There's going to be some uh, spaghetti squash and romesco sauce in there. And then um, just a little sample of our fried chicken sandwich, too. Before we let him go run back to do his thing, anyone have any questions for Chef? Uh, uh, you have three locations now? Yes, yeah. And do you do lunch at those locations? Uh, the Bellwether House is not open to the public. Um, we're hoping that can change someday, but as of right now, no. Uh, and Mirabelle is open um, like eight to five. Yeah, and they do they do like uh, Lee style waffles. We do sandwiches and all kinds of stuff. Like yeah. Yes. Are you going to be doing lunch and dinner? We will be doing like a lunch brunch service uh, from eight to one uh, Wednesday through Sunday, and we'll be doing dinner service Tuesday through Saturday, six to ten. Any other questions? So Mirabelle's a waffle spot across from. Yes, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the Bellwether House is on Gaston Street. It's just a, like a block and a half from Forsyth Park. Okay. Uh, in between Abercorn and um, Lincoln. The old uh, Dresser Palmer House. Yeah, the Dresser Palmer House is next to the Justine and uh, the Gaston. Any other questions? Who's uh, We got the name. I mean, like, so every. I love food so much. It's been a passion of mine since I was like really, really small. And, you know, learning about food as a kid, it, you just think that it's just cooking, but it's really, you're, you're passing on and learning about these traditions that have come from all over the world, like from cultures from everywhere. And they've, you know, they've, they've been passed down generation by generation orally and person to person till it got to like my grandparents. And, you know, and now I know how to do a, a thing. And folklore, it's just like everything that we have is folklore, our clothing and the ways that we do everything and our language and, and food is tied so much into who we are as people that I just felt like, you know, it, it really encapsulated the, my stance on food is that, yeah, if we, eat, we eat food to survive and get through the day and keep ourselves from getting angry, but it's really about, you know, it, it's also carrying on traditions from people in the distant past that that lived and died for us to be here. Yeah. What do you plan to use for your whole fish? Um, right now, uh, snapper. Um, we're working on sourcing it 
still at the moment just to get somebody that has a pretty good stock of it and is getting good product in. But um, snapper, uh, tilefish, maybe um, just, just anything that we can get that's from from this region, you know, like Florida up to South Carolina. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Cope had did a number on the EAT in Savannah. Is, is everything back to like pre COVID kind of standards or is it still um, broader? That would probably be a better question for Jesse. I actually moved here about 18 months ago, um, March of 2021. Uh, I, I was actually unemployed the entire first year of COVID and I, I spent that time with my, my wife and my two kids and we were living with my wife's parents and her sister. Um, so I fortunately didn't have to take part in the entire fiasco of trying to manage the restaurant business during that time. Um, and I started working again kind of when, when everything was, was clearing up a little bit and it's a little bit easier to, to operate. Um, but yeah, Jesse, Jesse would definitely have the insight on, on where things were and how they are now. Kind of a follow-up to that. Sure. How are you finding labor? Oh, it's been a challenge for the last decade. Um, I mean, I, I've lived in Portland and New York uh, in the last 10 years. And, and California as well. And I mean, it's, it's been a, a real struggle since about 2009. There's, uh, there's so many great chefs out there and there's so many restaurants opening and people wanting more restaurants and, uh, and there's just great places popping up everywhere and there's not enough people that can cook well. We, we moved from, we moved here from Portland, Oregon. We looked up on that paper. Where were oh, sure. in Portland? Uh, I mean, I lived all over that. I was there from 2006 to 2015. Um, if you know Ox Restaurant, I opened that. Yeah, I was the sous chef at Ox Restaurant when it opened. Um, St. Jack uh, Mediterranean Exploration Company, I did those reopenings. Um, but I worked at a, a, a ton of spots. I, I, my first like real kitchen job was at the Sapphire Hotel on 50th and Hawthorne. Um, yeah. Make chili? I love chili, yeah. We're having a cook-off next November. <laughs> next November, I'll put it on my calendar. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, sure. Are you going to take reservations or be first come, first serve? We will take reservations for parties of six or more. Um, if it makes sense for us to take reservations down the road, we will, but we're going to start without it for now. Um, third party reservation services can be costly and troublesome to deal with, but uh, we'll do what, what the community needs us to do. Yes. There are 72 seats. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. We were lucky to have such a nice, really well built out building. Uh, there's a guy named Joe Duckworth that's a was the contractor on it, and uh, he put together a really great bones for us to work with. I mean, obviously he did that for the fat radish, but we were very happy that he was the person that did that. A nice corner. Yeah. It's yeah. It's going to be really interesting after there's the Darling is opening there and the, the old Sushi Zen building is going to be done by the summertime and that's it's looking really nice. It's all the plans for it. Why did you decide to come to Savannah? Um, I mean, I had applied for like thousands of jobs. Uh, you know, like I said, I lived with my wife's parents and, for a year and it got to be pretty tense towards the end there. <laughs> and uh, it was like five adults two kids and four dogs and uh we we were like it's time to go so uh i applied for a bunch of spots there was there was one in the catskills there was one in montana um and then there was one here in savannah and i had always wanted to move here like when i was 18 19 i, I really wanted to move out here and go north instead but uh my wife had been here a bunch of times and she was like you, you should go fly out and check it out and i did and i i just fell in love with the city and <coughs> I love how like kind and polite people are here. And this is a really beautiful place. Um, so, I mean, we've, we've had a really, really nice time. We have great neighbors out on, on Wilmington Island. And, uh, you know, we're, we're super, super thankful to be here. Yeah. As a chef, how do you go about creating a new recipe as compared to following others' recipes? 
Uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's like uh, Isaac Newton said, you know, I'm, I only went so far from standing on the shoulders of giants. It's, I, I learned from a lot of really, really great people. And I always think about, you know, what I've learned in the past when I'm thinking about the future. But mostly it's just like, what do I have? And what do I want to taste today? And, you know, what's going to, what are we going to use to get there? But a lot of the times it's like, you know, what's, what ingredients do you have in front of you and how can you transform them? How do you know how to do that? And, you know, it's learning lots and lots of different techniques and, and then just kind of winging it. Anybody else? Is that it? All right. Thank you guys so much for having me out here. Thanks, Jesse, for having me out here. Jeff. All right. Um, I am I am most interested in in answering your questions. That's where I think most of the value is. But I will um, expound a little bit on what I said before um, before Chef came out about all of the new restaurants. I wrote about it. I don't know a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was. It's all a blur. Um, that at any given point, I can count. 10, 12, 15 new restaurants that I know about that are going to open. Um, and usually you can count five to seven that I don't know about, which pushed us this fall to the 20 range. And it was funny because right after I wrote about that, I heard from three other people, which pushed the number. I, I sat down at my desk and I, and I, okay, okay. And I counted them and I was at 26. Mm -hmm new eateries, some big, some small, but new eateries that are coming to, obviously most of them, I'd say of the 26, 24 of them are downtown Savannah. So you go back to what are they doing for labor? They're doing something because no one's slowing down. They keep opening, they're figuring it out, but we've got so much on the horizon. It's like the, the, the greatest, and I keep saying this every year, but it's, true because it keeps outdoing itself. It's like the greatest time for food in Savannah's history. And it keeps getting better and better and better. And everybody who, who and this happens quite a bit because I get the emails, someone who moves here from Portland because they hear that Savannah's this great food city. And I get, uh, we don't have, we only have one vegan option or we only have one or I don't have New Jersey pizza and people love to come here and complain about what we don't have. But those of us who have been here almost 20 years understand where we were 20 years ago and how we had nothing. So it's like, you know what? We've got some pretty good pizza now. I tell the story all the time. I was at Publix and this lady and her accent was as thick as exit 14A. It was, <laughs> you, she says, you're the food guy. Yeah, I'm paying, I'm checking out at Publix. There's no good New Jersey pizza here. Well, we know, then, ah. Ah, and she dismissed me. I was like, okay, whatever. And, and, and I finally said, well, have you tried New Jersey? <laughs> I was irritated. She made me take my earbud out. I was. <laughs> so anyway, people, people don't understand where Savannah has come from and where we are now. Those of us that have invested, you know, a lot of time here are like, oh my goodness, we have all of these great restaurants like Folklore and, and Roshu's Family Tradition, which just opened this past weekend on uh, Bull and 40th Street. And, um, Kyle Giacomino is going to be doing Italian at Starland. The Collins Quarter Group is doing high-end Italian on Broughton Street. There's just so many. And then I come to find out, having a conversation, a random conversation, like, hey, this so-and-so is from Savannah on, on, on a street corner in the meatpacking district of New York City. I come to find out that the building downtown uh, where Jimmy Johns is on Johnson Square there, Bull and Congress, whatever it is, that was sold. That's going to be a 230-seat a uh, 230 room hotel, it's the biggest building downtown before the, the Thompson Hotel over there. 230 room hotel with a rooftop bar and restaurant. I'm like, I'm telling you there's like so many that I don't know about, which is fine, they'll, they'll eventually get to me, but there's a ton and it's a great time to be in Savannah. Um, it's, it, it, we, we have so much fun eating it. You guys all know what your favorites are, but I do want to mention this, if you don't know about it already. Um, back in the, back in uh, April, I got a phone call out of the blue from a publisher in New York City who said, we were told uh, you were the 
the guy to write this book. Okay, tell me about the book. And it was a book of food crawls. They gave me 90 days to put it together, but I know I've been doing this 13 years. February will be 13 years. I know the food scene. So I did my research. I went and I tested the places that I hadn't been in a minute. And okay, all right, all right, all right. And for nine days, I locked myself in my office. And all I did was wake up, coffee, workout, write, lunch, write, dinner, shower, sleep for nine days in that kind of that order. Um, but I did, and it's it's was supposed to come out in the spring. It's now going to be out uh, June of 2023. I think it'll be about 250, 260 pages long. Um, this book is a good guide for all of us that live here, but it's obviously mostly for tourists. Um, there are 15 crawls in there. Um, some stop in here for a drink, but save your appetite because you want to eat here. And each crawl has five to six spots. And um, they'll make great Christmas presents next year. So <laughs> for all your friends who are coming to visit, sir. It says someone in the neighborhood is going by it a lot of times. Let me ask you this answer. What's the state of the neighborhood? Downtown. Really? I live downtown. Uh, okay. I have never lived south of Forsyth Park. I was going to say No, well, that's a good that's my favorite crawl. Okay. That it starts at uh Habitomica. We come up through Al Salam Delhi, uh, Green Truck Pub. Mood rights and um, over yonder, and then we end up at Arswood Station. That's my favorite crawl because it's our locals' crawl. The rest of it, okay, they're, they're great, but that's my favorite crawl. But I live over by Forsyth Park. Um, so one last thing about the book, uh, I, you know, my wife was more excited about it than I was because I actually have to do the work. But this, I, I guess, it went so well that they called me uh, right before Halloween. Turn this one in August first, right on time. Here you go. And uh, they called me right before Halloween and said, we love what you did. Would you be interested in doing another one? Okay. <clears throat> so two days later, I signed a deal with the same publisher to do Charleston Food Crawls. So I'm very, very excited about the research for that. Era has already said, can I tag along and take pictures with you? <laughs> so that's going to be fun. I was up there meeting with them last week and um, they were all about it. It's going to be, it's going to be good. But the whole, the whole, the whole brand going back to that thing from day one, whatever we've done has been Savannah Hilton Head of the South. Obviously, Savannah and Hilton Head are home, but it's been a it's been a, a journey around the South. If I traveled to I was in Asheville for a wedding in in, uh, in October, and I came back and and rode thirty six hours in Asheville because we ate everything. If it just stopped moving, it was donuts and tapas and beer, obviously, and all that stuff. So um, you know. I, I, I pride myself on being the voice of food we do because I don't do it alone here in Savannah, but we are excited to branch out a little bit. So um, there's a ton of new restaurants here in town. Uh, I'm, I'm, we are always appreciative of the support. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. And that's all I got. So I'd love to answer a bunch of questions. Ma'am. Are there going to be any restaurants <clears throat> opening near the Manhattan Market anymore? You know, I was just there for my first Ghost Pirates game uh, Friday, and I was just appalled at the fact that the worst beer on earth was $15 a can. <laughs> but that's a whole other Dr. Phil. To answer your question, we were walking through the parking lot, and I said to my buddy, I see some tickets, I said, you know, someone should put a sports bar out here. For, you know, pregame, there's enough events here now with the season of the hockey and all the concerts and all that stuff. I can't imagine that area not developing but obviously it's going to take a few years yeah i would think so no no i know savannah b company is moving their operations over there and i'm sure they'll have retail and all that disney world stuff when the time comes but yeah there's there's going to be a movement in that direction do you have a favorite uh off the beaten path place to get fresh oysters define off the beaten path not downtown to get oysters out of the city out of the city, uh, probably Farm Bluffton, 35 minutes from the top of the bridge. I tell people about the food in the low country all the time, and it's a huge, has been for years, a huge pet peeve of mine, because I get asked by people who I know live, maybe Ardsley Park, they're not like way out here for you guys to go all the way to Hilton Head is a, is a nightmare. I get that. 
But the people who live right off of downtown who could take a Saturday afternoon and go to lunch in Bluffton, hey, where should we go? What are you looking for? I'm looking for this. Man, have you tried Farm Bluffton? No. Where is it? 35 minutes from the top of the bridge. Go. The next time I see it, where you go, oh, we went out to Tybee. How, how That took you the same amount of time. Stop being afraid of the bridge. Go live a little. My goodness, sir. Yes, sir. It's not open yet. It'll be open in the spring. I forget the name of it, but it's going to be, you know, where Flying Monk is. Oh, it's flying. flying Monk at Bull, oh, okay. right two doors down, where uh, where Fuddruckers used to be, right there next to. Yeah, and it's Collins Quarters doing high end Italian. He's all excited about it. He told me, I see him walking in the park in the morning. He's going to wait till you see my champagne glass. <laughs> so, yes, it'll be there, he says, in the spring, sir. Kind of similar to her question about in Margarita. There's no great food, there's not a food hall really in Savannah. Correct. That, that warehouse right next to the market really seems like an ideal place to sell food. You know, I agree, but the problem with something like that, that building's so historic, and you have to put fryers and plumbing and all of that stuff, it would never happen. It would never happen. There was talk of a food hall, if you know the area I'm talking about. At Plant Riverside, right where River Street is, there's the fountain right in front of Electric Moon, if you know the area. Yeah. On this side of River Street, there's a building right here that kind of points into River Street, and the Alita Hotel is here. That was going to be a food hall till the pandemic. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it, the same people own it or whatever. It's still a good idea. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. But, but yeah. Um, some people are looking at putting second locations of their restaurants from Savannah down there and whatever. So yes, we need one, a small one. And what they do in Charleston, and where else do they do it? Somewhere else I was recently. No, it's in Charleston. It's in their city market where all of the tourists are. And, it's, and, it, and it rotates. And they get chefs in there for three months at a time to see if they can develop a following. How great would that be a city market here? But anyway. Sir. Yes, you know, Savannah doesn't seem to have a whole lot of ethnic restaurants. Do you ever see that changing? Sure. <laughs> One vindaloo at a time, I guess. I, you know, we 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 just got a new Mediterranean shook at uh Henry and Anderson. Is are you giving me the axe? No, no. Yeah, if you want to go through the line. Oh, that looks good. Error, we got photos, right? Okay. <laughs> um Shook is new Mediterranean. There's another Mediterranean. I got an email over Thanksgiving. Hey, so-and-so wants to talk to you. There's, they're coming little by little. You know, they, we're not going to get five or six at one time. But yeah, German, Portuguese. Yeah, I don't know how much demand there is in Savannah, Georgia for German and Portuguese. So. <laughs> on, the, on the website, edenlikeit.com, it's right there in the front. Newsletter, subscribe. Yes. I gotta ask you because I interact that you have. Yes. Yo soy cubano, yo hablo español. Oh, how about that? So, so do you have like a favorite Cuban restaurant? In in Savannah? Well, here, 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 there's careful. one. There is one. There is one. That's it. It's my kitchen. You, know? <laughs> you weren't in think I was gonna say that. Be careful. Sorry. No, 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 I, I, you know, like, like, like I, I teased our Italian friends who, who can't get enough of New Jersey when they come down here. I, I can be the snob in reverse. I love Contra Legre. I do. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Cuban Window Cafe was, was, was better with the previous owners, but people like it. So knock yourself out. But when I crave it, I make it at home. <laughs> Yes. How do we improve our farmers markets in Atlanta? The 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 the, the Forsyth Farmers Market, I think, is pretty good. The 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 see that goes back to what we were talking about when we you know we we I think it's pretty good. I think what would explode that farmers market is if they change the laws to allow people to cook and eat lunch there. Okay. Then I've been saying I was on the board with the farmers market for three years and I kept saying, man, we need to, we need to, but in Savannah, everything just moves so slowly and there's other priorities. And if they made that like a outdoor food hall on Saturday mornings, 
I think it would kind of feed off of itself. But yeah, I mean, the, 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 out here? Oh, I have no idea. I don't think so. I, I don't, isn't there, there was one for a minute, wasn't there? No. Food, yes, the 912 food yeah. truck. Yeah, the, the, the issue with the Forsyth Farmers Market, and I could say because I sat on the board for three years, is that they are obsessively organic and farmer driven. So I, it doesn't explain how sometimes they're selling bananas there, but. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but no, they they want to they they were created and their bylaws are to be all about the farmer. So it's hard to kind of change it now. No matter how much the food scene has grown, I think it would be so beneficial to that farmer's market. But yes, ma'am. I know there's a lot of restaurants coming up and all kinds of people trying. I'm just curious, what's the turnover rate for the restaurants? you know, we've been going at a decent clip post pandemic. Um, I think the ones that are opening know that they have to brace themselves for whatever it's going to look like, but the numbers, I mean, the numbers have been through the roof. I have, I had, we're coming up on the holiday, so it's a good point of reference. I had two different restaurants last, last year was 21. Yes. Last holiday season, I had two different restaurants tell me we opened for dinner on Thursday. We set an all time record for this, whatever. Or was December 28th. We set an all time December 28th record in the history of the restaurant, which I think at that point was 11, 12 years. December 29th, they broke December 28th's record. And that two different restaurants, unrelated to each other, told me that they were breaking records because all the people, we all know how many people started coming here, Plant Riverside, and the whole thing. They're breaking records down there. So, to answer your question, the ones that are smart enough to do it right are doing fine. Might be tight. It might be an issue with labor here and there, but um, if you if you go under, it's because your food wasn't good enough. Bottom line, period. So, sir, just with uh, Hyundai moving to the Tri County area, yes. Uh, what do you see as a possible new offering of Asian, particularly Korean? That goes back to the question here. The question was with 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 a Hyundai plant coming. Um, do we see any more expansion of of Asian or other ethnic food? It goes back to the bottom line, you know, we have some Himalayan curry kitchen out of Richmond Hill does a does a really nice job, but you know, how many people are coming here to make a, a new two or three restaurants with that cuisine successful? That's not the demand in Pooler and Bloomingdale. And I say that respectfully, that's not, you know, they're they're not sitting there waiting for the next Indian restaurant to open or Chinese restaurant. That's just not the demo there. So while we'll get some people who come work here in search of it, you got to be careful with expecting, you know, uh, uh, what's the street up in Atlanta? No, 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 the one, the one with um, with all the with all, with all the Asian food. Buford Highway. Yes, that's not going to happen here. <laughs> that's just not. It, there's just not enough demand. Anyone else? One Sir? Yeah. Well, we have Savannah Technical College who does a nice job, but what Savannah Technical College has been missing was the hands on uh, experience. The, the restaurant tours say, well, they, I, we're getting people from there, but they're not properly trained because. It's different to be in a classroom and then send them out. Well, uh, Savannah Technical College has acquired, this is a year's process, and broken ground at 7 West Bay Street, right in front of the Hyatt. City Hall is here. And they're doing a whole uh, cooking school, um, cafe, whole thing there to give their students practical experience before they send them out into the into the world, which makes a huge difference. They're very excited about that. So that's coming. Last I talked to them was supposed to be end of 23, so hopefully that'll hold. So a couple more and we're done. Anyone? Sir? Um, I'm just curious um, with all those restaurants that are kind of piggybacked on, like she said, what would you say is like key to a successful restaurant? Is it all the food? Is it location, location, location? Is it tavern? Is it all the above? Like, what, what do you think? 
So that's all the ones you see that are successful with like the common people. Do good food. We, I, 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 yes, I, I subscribe to the New Orleans model where it doesn't matter where it is, what it looks like, you know, what do you got to go through to get there? If the food is good enough, people are going to find you and they're going to give you money for the food. Bottom line. And Savannah obviously is, is far, far more, um, whatever the word you want to insert there than New Orleans is, but there's no gimmicks. There's just, you know, do good food and people will find you do a great burger. <laughs> Talk about consistency. Just do what you do consistently and, and you'll be fine. I mean, I understand that rents downtown are difficult and the price of a, of a great burger these days has gone through the roof like everything else. But if you do, if you do great food, I mean, look, these guys, I think these guys are going to do very well. Um, look at Common Thread. Common thread is if I if I had a gun to my head or or the Wonder Woman magic lasso to make me tell the truth, I would say that Common Thread is my favorite restaurant. And they just they blew out of a cannon and they have not skipped a beat because they're consistent and they're great. So yes. correct. 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 Right. And then everything they do is great. Yes. Yes, love it. My favorite burger? Oh boy, that depends on my mood. Um, I love the burger at Emporium in the Perry Lane Hotel. I love the burger in the food truck, the Savannah smashed Savannah burger in the food truck. And over yonder. That's over yonder's burger. Where is it? Uh, no, yeah, I'm sitting with it in the top picture. That's the over yonder burger. Yeah. Ooh, I killed it that day. Ooh. Yeah, it was all running down my arm. It was great. <laughs> all right. If we don't have any, sir, last question. My history? Oh, Lord, can I do that in 90 seconds? Uh, I moved here in 1999 to be a sports anchor at WSAB. My daughter was born here two years later. We fell in love with Savannah. We lived right in front of the DeSoto Hotel, Drayton and Liberty. And we moved away, moved to Nashville, moved to El Paso with the plan to come back to our home of Florida. But there was a job opening here at Fox 10 o'clock news. And I applied and it was the same guy who hired me the first time at WSAV. I applied for the job. And when he called me and said, hey, we want to bring you in for an interview. Then I told my wife, hey, what do you think of going back to Savannah? And she got all excited. And she said, I give her all the credit. She said, if we can find a house near Forsyth Park, we don't need to move anymore. <laughs> that was the summer of 2008. We all know what happened to property values in the summer of 2008. We snuck into a house right off of Forsyth Park. Two years later, I started a food block. And here we are. Was that 90 seconds? <laughs> Sir. As long as we're doing self-promotion. Yes. Isn't that what I'm here for? Okay. I wrote a cookbook. Oh. It took me a lot longer than nine days. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, thank you all again for your time and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. I'll give you highlights of where we're going for the next 90 days. Uh, starting, starting in January, our next seminar will be at, here at St. Peter's on uh, the measurement of growth at the base of the food chain pertaining to fish. On the 21st, we're going to have a saltwater fishing clinic led by Robert Hale. Uh, it'll be on a Saturday morning. 
And on the 27th, we'll have our annual fish fry and be local catering, we'll be catering it. It will be local fish, uh, trout, uh, whatever the catch du jour is, and they will have been in the water the day prior to the fish fry. So real fresh fish, it was excellent last year. Uh, February 20th, we're gonna have a seminar on uh, shark conservation and tagging. We may ask for a few volunteers, <laughs> it won't be me. On the 20th, uh, Chad DeBose from uh, Rivers and Glen will be presenting on saltwater fly fishing. And on the 18th coming up, our next bigger, big event, we have three signature events throughout the year. Yes. One we just had yesterday was the oyster uh, roast and the pig picking event. Uh, we also had the kids fishing derby, but on April 18th, it will be our annual CCA banquet held at Palmetto Club. So that's what we have in the foreseeable future. There will be some add-ons to this. There will be other fly fishing clinics and other spin fishing clinics here on the island. Um, see, this is our next speaker. He's a PhD student, Skidaway Institution of Oceanography. And now tonight, there'll be a drawing for a $100 gift certificate for folklore. So you can be one of their first customers there. And uh, the first $100 will be paid for. And Stan, how many tickets do we have? Okay. $250 worth. $250 worth, okay. So let's see, Chef Jesse, would you mind drawing for us? And Susie Fusco, do you have that extra? Do you have that extra gift certificate with you? I have it. You have it, the extra one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, draw a winner here, Chef. Got, uh, ticket number 506980. Come on. 506980. Put your glasses on. <laughs> Don't be proud. 506980. Wow. Hey, -oh. Now stick around. Stick around. We're going to have a second drawing. A second drawing because you were so generous.